Hey, what's going on everyone? So today we're gonna to be testing out the 52 volt, 750 watt Magicycle Deer e-bike. If you haven't seen the review video of the 26 inch full size deer that I reviewed, make sure you guys go over and check that video out. There's tons of details on that bike, but this is their smaller version sitting on 20 inch by four inch fat tires. Has the same dual suspension in the back as its bigger brother, but let's hop on this thing, see what kind of power it has. First test we're gonna do is take it up this hill and see what kind of power it has with just throttle only. And so just for a little context, if you haven't seen my hill test video going up this hill, my fastest hub motor bike is the Magicycle Ocelot Pro going up this hill at 11 miles per hour. So let's see if this Magicycle Deer Mini will beat the Ocelot Pro, see if it'll at least maintain 11 miles an hour or if it's faster than it. All right, here we go, throttle only. I always start in the same spot. 750 watt, 52 volt Magicycle Deer Mini. Good so far, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, so 11 miles per hour. So it's exactly the same speed up that hill as the Magicycle Ocelot Pro, which was, like I said, my fastest single motor hub motor bike going up that hill to date. So we're gonna go test this thing out on a big hill, one of the longest hills in the next town over. We're gonna be going down a dirt road, seeing how the suspension works. Now, one thing I do wanna mention that I already noticed is there is some squeaks coming from that back shock somewhere. I did take it apart, try to grease it up, oil it up really good, and I still have the squeak, so I'm not 100% sure where that squeak is coming from. But this bike, one thing I love about it, and not many bikes do this, is that it gives you the ability to go full speed with just throttle. So your throttle assist is not linked to your pedal assist levels. And also it has a setting where you can put it on P and pedal it like a normal bicycle, which disengages the throttle. It's basically like turning the throttle off. And then when you put it in mode zero, you can actually still use the throttle. So you can pedal it like a regular bicycle and still have full throttle. All right, so let me show you that here. We're in P, which is basically all the electronics turned off. You could pedal it like a normal bicycle and it will not give you any power output. You could bump that up to zero and then the pedal assist does not engage. So you could still pedal it like a regular bicycle, but then you have full power of the throttle whenever you hit that throttle, which will take you up to max speed. We're gonna be testing out max speed here, going back this other way, see what it cuts at. And then you have your individual pedal assist levels too. Right now I have it set to seven. And what's awesome about this display, it's very intuitive. You can go in here in the settings and you can change your pedal assist levels to go from zero to three, all the way up to zero to nine. And you can also change the individual power output of each one of those settings. But everything's really easy to see, really easy to read. It tells you what everything is. There's no guessing what P codes are. All right, so let's hit it and see what kind of max speed we can get out of this. And this is actually slightly uphill right here, so I'm not quite sure what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna do throttle only here. 25, 26, 27, and it's slight uphill. So easily 27 going up a slight incline. If I were going the other way, it would probably be a, a little bit faster than 28, I would imagine. Might have to try it again on another straight stretch. I'm still just throttle only. So that's awesome. And as I said before, you can even do that when you're in pedal assist zero, you can still get up to 28 miles per hour. Let's see what we can hit on this stretch here. It goes a little bit downhill slightly. Let's just do throttle. I'm in pedal assist zero, 26, 27, 28, 29. And I just felt the motor cut. Still going downhill slightly, so. I think it's about 29 miles per hour, to tell you the truth. That's about when I feel like the motor cuts out. So very nice on the speed, very nice on the power, just like all their other models. Great power, one of my favorites for sure. And this is what the pedal cadence is at at 25. A little bit fast, 26. And this has a 14 to 28 freewheel on the back. Would have really been nice to see an 11 to 28 freewheel for higher speeds. That's something that I'm definitely gonna be upgrading here on this bike. 
Very nice size though. I feel like this one fits me a little bit more than the larger full size version of this bike because I'm a smaller person. There's 28. And this is how fast I'd be pedaling. 27, 28. So it is a little fast. All right, let's hit this dirt road here. We're gonna run out of daylight. Oh, very nice on that suspension. All right, so testing out the suspension here. I'm thinking that possibly the squeak might go away after it gets some wear and tear on it. Oh, I'm about to lose my microphone. Hold on, I gotta stop and fix that. Let's test out these brakes. Oh yeah, I could skid easily if I wanted to. About lost it there. Let's fix this real quick. This happens all the time. I gotta come up with something to keep this on there, especially on this bumpy road. All right, here we go again. But I have to hurry up because I'm gonna run out of daylight here. So far, suspension's really nice. And what's nice about this is that you can have a slightly, oh man, I'm about losing my microphone again. Maybe I'll clip it on the wire when I get down here. Smooth so far on this gravel. But anyway, what's nice about this dual suspension is that you can keep the seat down a little bit lower versus on the uh, Ocelot. Pro because with a suspension seat post you actually add a few inches in height and this you can keep the seat height down but still get that suspension effect. All right, fixed it again. Hopefully we don't lose it this time. So now this bike does come in weighing about 83 pounds with the battery, which is about 10 pounds heavier than the Magicycle Ocelot Pro. I have the front basket, a suspension seat post and a Cloud9 seat on it and it weighs about as heavy as this bike with none of that on there. So just keep that in mind with this versus the Ocelot Pro, you will be adding about 10 pounds. Man, this is pretty bumpy here. On the front suspension, you do have an adjuster on the right-hand side and a preload knob on your left. And the rear shock does seem to possibly have some kind of adjustment on it that you can maybe tighten up. When I took it out, I noticed that, but I don't think it's really adjustable, to be honest. It would have been nice to have some kind of adjustability there in the back. I think I actually may have loosened it when I was trying to adjust it to uh, get that squeak gone, but actually I don't even hear the squeak right now, so hopefully it's gone. And this bike is using Bengal hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors in both the front and the rear of the bike. So that stopping power, like I said before, is really good. No complaints there. So far, I think that squeak may have went away. All right, here we go down this steep hill. And this is the one we're gonna be coming back up. We're gonna see how good this bike does coming up this hill. And to be honest, my wife rides the Ocelot Pro most of the time when we ride around home because it is one of the most powerful ones that I have. Well, other than the dual motor bikes that I now have, but I haven't gotten her on those yet because they're pretty big and bulky. Um, I think if she gets on one of those, she might like it. But for now, she loves the Ocelot Pro because it's the most powerful getting up these hills. Oh, this is pretty cool. Got a train down here. That's pretty neat. Usually there's no trains down here when I'm, when I'm riding. Pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna hit this hill full speed from here. I don't have that far to go till I get to it. And we're gonna see how this bike performs going up that hill, if it overheats, if the controller gets hot and starts limiting my power. But let's get into it. I'm gonna pedal a little bit. This is how I would normally ride when I hit this hill. I'm gonna hit it starting out at about 25, which is what the speed limit is on this road. And I'm in gear seven, which is the hardest to pedal right now. We're gonna see how good we can do with this before I have to downshift. But look how steep this hill is, guys, and it's long too. So if it makes it up this one easily with me sitting here holding the handlebars one-handed in gear seven, I don't have anything to worry about on any of the hills in my area. Oh yeah, easily easily making it up here in gear seven. I don't even think I need the downshift. I'm putting a little bit of effort in, but not much guys, because like I said, I'm holding the handlebars with one hand. I'd have to be holding on with two hands to put a lot of effort in. I'm not gonna lie, I feel a slight burn, but it's not bad at all. And we're up. So yeah, really good power out of this bike. 
I think it says 96 newton meters of torque out of this motor. So very good power, just like all the other bikes in their model lineup that I've tested. And it did not seem like it limited me. Now it does show you the wattage on the display, but I believe it only goes up to somewhere around 900 watts and it's capped at that. So it is peaking at well over 900, but the display just doesn't show it. And the front chain ring is 53 tooth. I forgot to mention that when I was talking about the derailleur. So here we go back up this gravel road, a little bit of throttle only. See if you can see that front suspension working, rear suspension working. Right up it, no problem. And that's what I love about full throttle that gets you past 20. If you don't feel like pedaling, you're not limited to 20 miles per hour like you are with some other bikes and their throttles. And when we hit this next incline here, we'll see what kind of power we're getting out of the display. See if it starts limiting me. Nine hundred watts. And it's still giving me at least 900 watts. Still displaying 900. And like I said, it's peaking well over that, no doubt. And another thing I love about the display on these Magic Cycles is that you could set the uh, display meter for the battery level to show either percentage or voltage. I always like to show voltage, and right now I'm running at 51.6 volts under load. And that's gonna give you a little bit more accurate of a reading when you're trying to decide how much battery power you have left. Because voltage is always better to read than a percentage because it could vary greatly on how certain bike companies have that program to display the percentage and sometimes you'll last a lot longer than you think and sometimes you'll run out a lot quicker than you think so it's always nice to be able to see your battery voltage when you're riding and so far it seems like the trip meter is exactly on i'm showing 5.35 miles on my gps and 5.3 on the bike itself so very very close there on the trip meter and i think the squeak may have went away i'm not hearing it at all before when i was just barely bouncing on it i could hear it squeaking all over the place but now it's pretty quiet And this bike also has cruise control, but what's nice about this model is that you could turn it off and on in the display setting. 29, 30, 31, it was, it's, I think it was still giving me some wattage right around 30 miles an hour, but let's check that again down here. Yeah, it's still giving me wattage even at 30. So 30 some watts at 30 miles an hour. Let's see when it engages down here. I got 18 watts, zero watts. 126 watts 340 so yeah it's still giving me like 340 watts even at 29 miles per hour so i definitely 28 29 maybe even 30 miles an hour on this bike if i change out that freewheel in the back and was able to pedal at higher speeds so very very nice on the speed and guys i've been pushing this bike hard too since i left the house a lot of full speed a lot of just throttle and the controller is not overheating now it's only about 65 degrees out today, which is a beautiful uh, weather for March here. Usually it's very, very cold here. Pulling me up no problem. Still outputting over 900 watts. Oh man, I love these quick releases, but I just freaking dropped my GoPro and it just rolled about 10 times on the pavement. Nicked my road mic all up. Didn't damage the GoPro though. Thankfully this Ulanzi case is taking all the the impact i actually dropped this last week when i was down in phoenix recording fell off that was the first time now so this is the second time this fell off here in the last two weeks i wish there was some kind of safety mechanism to keep this on here i always hold the gopro sometimes not paying attention it hit that release and it falls off but man nicked it up pretty good there luckily it didn't damage the display or anything a little bit of battle scars on my road mic though guess that's the cost of doing business <laughs> All right, here we go on the Magic Cycle Deer Mini 20 inch throttle only. Let's see if we can make it up this hill. Fully charged battery and almost crested up over. This far from making it. 
Now the only bike that I actually crested all the way up over that hill with a single hub motor was the Magicycle Cruiser Pro. And you can see that in the hill test video, so go check it out.